And that's where we live. But for me, coming to the United States was like going to a foreign country. And I was already kind of shaken up going to London. And then here, my parents are so excited about going back home. But it wasn't familiar to me. And thank goodness I have this large extended family that you know yes, so well yes. that made me, in short order, feel like it was home. But I will say this, and I say this to people who have um, at some point in their life felt like the other, the only, that uh, when I was plopped down in this public school in my neighborhood and I had a British accent, it only takes one year <laughs> to develop a British accent, and I'm speaking Farsi, French, and English, and you know I got red hair and freckles and light skin, and I was two years ahead of myself in school. Well, I used to get beat up every day, every mm -hmm. single day, for any one of those reasons. And so what did I do? I stopped speaking Farsi. I lost that British accent the first week. Um, and I stopped, tell I stopped telling my story about being born in Iran. Mm. And the first, I would say, 20 plus years of my life, no one had heard of Iran. And then after President Carter uh, went through the hostage, cri hostage crisis, everyone had heard of Iran. And it kind of went downhill from there to today. Bowman being Valerie's real family name. I might add that Bowman is an Anglo-Saxon name, not an African-American name. And although Valerie's father was of African-American descent, he was also of white European descent. Racism hardly comes into play here. But anyway, back to the Bowmans. Uh, Valerie Jarrett worked for Daly as the sole African American in his uh, uh, administration. She was supposed to be the outreach person to the yeah. black community. Although she comes from such a rarefied background, yeah. very wealthy family, that she had very little to do with the the street. Yeah. I mean, she didn't really her know. Her parents were wealthy and her grandparents were wealthy. Yes, very she, wealthy. Yeah. And she was the deputy chief of staff for Daly for quite a while and hired Michelle Obama. There we go. And it was through Valerie Jarrett that Michelle and Barack Obama met the power structure in Chicago. She, Valerie, introduced them to people who were connected and who had money and could fund his Barack Obama's ambitions. And they were pretty good politicians. That's right. They, 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 they were good in Chicago. They got their people elected in Chicago that they wanted to over the years and ran that with an iron fist. And they took that same philosophy to Washington, D.C. And we didn't know that. You know, Barack Obama is a great campaigner and a bad president. Well, first of all, I think we have to turn it into a teaching moment. I'm fine. I'm worried about all the people out there who don't have a circle of friends and followers who come right to their defense. Thank you so much. W would you legitimately have her on to discuss everything? I would love to. Oh, that's fantastic. Any any message to her? Come on my show. Come on my show? Okay. Uh, did you hear Roseanne just I uh, invited you to her talk show? Would you uh would you go and, and to speak with her? No. No, you wouldn't really <laughs> Will you be watching either way? No. No? Have you forgiven her? No? Have you been able to forgive her yet? Who's your favorite person to follow on Twitter? Come on, give me one person you like to follow on Twitter. I didn't think they should have fired her. Like, if you didn't want to work with her, that's, you know, again, that's certainly your choice. I didn't think they should have fired her, though, like because she came right out and apologized. Mm -hmm. She said, hey, look, I'm sorry. And it seems like a lot of times now when they have time, they rethink it. Like, James Gunn, they... I mean, they were old tweets, but then they brought him back after a little while, things cool off. Do you think they reacted kind of quickly when they got rid of her? No. No. I don't think so. Um, and I, I say that because of the, just because of, of the, if, if, if things were different in the country right now, if we weren't so divided, then maybe she could have pulled that out with, with uh, some, you know, uh, a sit down, big uh, teaching moment but there's no we don't have any more no we don't have, we, we have no, we don't do more. i do and i want to mention that bob Iger, who's a ceo of disney called me uh, before the announcement he apologized he said that he had zero tolerance for that sort of racist bigoted comment and he wanted me to know before he made it public that he was canceling his show and so i appreciate that they did that place with it. She went low like that and, and said you look like a monkey or whatever. Did you have to stop yourself from tweeting back at her? Like, I really have you do. seen yourself, Roseanne? I really, I have really you? did not have to. <laughs> I did not have to give. In fact, I always say like, Ro Roseanne who? Yeah, yeah, yeah.
You think it's a double standard? Hey! There you go. There you go. There you go. You did that gently, but yeah. <laughs> and I'm thinking about, you know, what happened to me on ABC and was that anti-Semitism that they refused to let me explain my tweet, which, you know, what, you know, I thought the woman was white. And so the tweet itself, when I thought she was white, meant, but nobody cares about reality or truth, I know that, but what the tweet meant, uh, the tweet was in response to what I consider to be an existential threat to my people about the Iran deal. And a movie about the subjugation of human beings. So I wonder if my civil rights were violated at all as a Jew, that I wasn't allowed to speak in defense of Israel and my people when I told Bob Iger from the beginning that I would never stop doing that. And it makes me so mad too to think that those same people who, who, th who, and I can't tell you how many times I heard the term. So I heard it, it's mine, okay, not yours. Stay out of my business. But I heard the words, N word, lover, leveled at me for decades in Hollywood when I tried to bring black writers to my show. And those same people are the ones that call me a racist. I don't accept your definition. And you know what? You caused me so much pain. And it didn't have to be, it was unnecessary. And I forgive everybody who was part of the conspiracy to destroy me and silence me and remove me and fire me and humiliate me and call me a racist because I defended my people, the Jews, particularly the Jews of Arab descent, which uh, American left knows nothing about.